we'll next talk about the bottom panel. And the bottom panel is sometimes subdivided into multiple segments. And I'll explain the purpose of each one of them as well. For this purpose, let's use this um, image that I've got. And I'm going to do some mapping on this image by selecting three points for surfaces. For this one, I'll zoom in a bit while pressing the control key. As I said before, the control key will disable for the moment that specific function that's been selected. And I'll take some of these points and you'll see what happens is each time I create one of these points, the point will also be displayed down the bottom within this stereo net. So that's the reason for the stereo net within the meshes option. What you'll also find is each time I double click on a location, that location um, coordinates will be displayed within this text box to the right hand side. I'm going to reset the docking for the moment. I'm just going to remove these objects that I've got in my scene. I'm going to clear the mapping disks that I've just created so we can move on to the next one, which is the marker option. So let's open that up again. So I'll use some or load some marker data that I've got in the same set I've used before. And you'll see what happens is I've got a, a histogram down the bottom. And as I change the column of interest, the histogram will change with my column. What you'll also see is each time I change the column, the data on the right hand side will change. And that's all the often used statistical data that you would use or need for any of these data analysis exercises that you do. So let's delete this data, move on to the next tab, which is mapping. I'm loading the same file again as mapping data this time. And you'll see it's not the difference. The only difference now is I still have the histogram. I still have the statistics, but I now also have this addition of a stereo net because I've got structural information associated to my data set. And the last one would be for drillers. And the drill one would represent only the geotechnical data. So the colors and the surveys will not be represented down the bottom, but the geotechnical data will be represented in a similar fashion to markers. So let's have a look at the right panel. The right panel has multiple tabs as well. And this is what I previously called the complex actions, not complex because they're difficult, complex because they've got a whole bunch of functionality and settings associated to each tab. The first one or the first tab would be the one of most interest and that is to create clippings. And this will be covered in a future video, but in essence what it does, it creates a clipping of that particular object and it could be in terms of lines, it could be in terms of polygons and so forth. The second one is where you create yourself a coordinates grid and there's different grids that you could use. If you want to just have a scale, you'll see if I select the value, nothing happens because you have to be in parallel view for the scaling to work correctly. And that gives you some indication of the scale of the object that you're working on. If you want to have a more thorough 3D grid, like a coordinate system, that you can do, and there's two options in which you can do those with multiple selections on how that can be done. The next option is to move options, or the next three actually goes together, the move, the rotate, and the scaling, because that's to transform your option, your, your object to a new location scale or rotational uh, selection. So for moving, I'll select a two-point offset, and I'll pick two points within my scene. So let's say this movement has to take place in the direction that I've indicated, but I don't want to change the horizontal displacement, I'll make the Z zero. And what I'll also do is I don't want to offset, it, offset the object by the full amount, maybe just by 100 meters. I then select move mouse pick and I pick the object that needs to be moved and it will be moved in the direction by the amount that I specified. I can get it back to the original, loca original location by selecting reverse, move mouse pick, pick on the object again and it's back to the original location. The next one is a rotation, and it can be done along many of these axes. So in this case, let's just select 30 degrees, for example. I'll rotate, I'll select my object, and it will be rotated by 30 degrees. I can set it back to the original location by saying reverse, rotate mouse pick, pick on the object, 
and it's back to where it was before I started. The next one is to scale an object. And you'll see what happens is if I change the value in the X in the X box, all these values will be changing simultaneously because uniform scaling is selected at this point. If you want to make separate selections for each one of these uh, axes, then you uncheck uniform scaling and those values can be changed as well. And the same as before, scale mouse pick, select on the object, it will now be scaled three times bigger. I can say inverse, scale mouse pick, and it's back to the original size. The final option, the transform option, is a bit more involved, so I'll use a different example to show how this is done. I'm not going to explain in detail, this will come at a future video. So let's say for example, I want to change this green object and move it to the location of the yellow object. So the yellow object will be my target object, and I'm going to select three points on my target object and pick those points. And I'm going to make sure that my snapping mode, which we'll discuss later, is in vertex snap snapping mode. And I'll select my three points of interest on the target object. Next, I'll move to the object that needs to be moved. And I'll pick the same points in the same order on that object as well. Now these values that was now filled into these cells could also be put in by hand if that's easier. I then accept and pick the object and you'll see the two objects will now be a perfect match on top of one another.